Pair of socks. Pair of socks. A belt. A belt. Huzzah! Whoa! <laughs> Machete! Machete! What's going on, Fire Team? Welcome to Shift Fire, the exploration and appreciation of all things military culture. My name is Cameron Fath. I am a former Army Ranger, and with me, as always, Israel Wright. It's good to be back, folks. I'm a former Green Beret, and we are going to do an episode called War Wallet. Now, we're doing a very special edition of War Wallet today. Cameron and I have $100 each. We're going to head out into the wild. We're going to be looking for a military surplus store, and we're going to see which one of us can get the best haul using only $100. $100. And I'm confident that I will perform much better than Israel because I am superior in every other I way. I am sure that my purchases will be of higher quality and more numerous than Cameron's. Well, we just got to find out. So we're going to head out and see what we can bring in. But before we head off on our grand adventure, folks, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button. Help us out with the channel. Stay updated with all things Shift Fire. Let's do it. Oh man, he's gonna need that head start. What's going on, fire team? Me and Joe, we made it here to Supply Sergeant. Got $100 for me to spend on whatever I want. So I'm super excited. Hopefully I can find something really cool to get here. Surplus stores are always a hit or miss, so I mean, there's no better way to just get in there and find something. So let's do it. Uh, one of the problems with this kind of thing is that, like I know my budget, obviously it's a hundred bucks, but I really have to think about like what I need right now, you know? Do I need clothing? Am I looking for camping stuff, tactical stuff? Is it gonna be used for Milsim? I, one thing I like to try to do is get one piece of equipment that I can use for multiple applications, you know? So, I mean, obviously, the pants, I've always wanted a pair of dicky pants or maybe like cargo pants. Let's look. This is my favorite wall out of this entire surplus. It's all the survival stuff. There's some filtration, there's water bladders, there is a bunch of land navigation tools, there is saw blades, machetes, fire starters, compasses, just naming things I see, but I think the bulk of the most important things are on this wall. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time over here making sure, because I got a lot of money to spend. You know, one thing I wanted to ask all of you watching this, like, why do you go to surplus stores? What do you like about them? Why would you go to a surplus store as opposed to maybe an REI or a Cabela's or something like that? Is there something unique about them? Do you go for like the, the old school, like military gear? Or do you go for, you know, newer stuff i'm seeing some name brand stuff you know and uh that's not really where what i associate with surplus stores so uh, it's interesting to see i think i might lose some of the clothing and maybe get a few more pieces of gear i've got i i just don't want to get stuff that i don't think i'm ever going to use you know just because oh i got out of a surplus store i want to really be careful in my thinking Ooh, tents gosh should, should i just get a tent <laughs> tent for 80 bucks or should i go to someplace else Thank you. What's going on, man? You got my hundred bucks worth of stuff. I'm very confident. It's way better than what Israel chose. And I'm going to prove it to you when we talk about it. So, $98. No, sir, the military? Yes, I do. Just let's do it. All right, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. All right, got my bag of goodies. I'm excited to uh, see what Israel's got and uh, tell Izzy how bad his decisions were. Catch you guys at the table. And we're back, folks. And magically, somehow we are wearing the same exact clothing that we managed to wear before we left on this journey. But that's a question you don't need to know the answer to. But. I'm excited to see what you purchased, man. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what your haul is, man. You want to bring out the first item? You want to do it one by one? Sure. I, I would love to start. Okay, all right, go for it, man. All right, let me, uh, I'll start with this just because it's big and it's brawn. Hey. So, the first thing I decided to buy for the price of $11.95 is a 8x10 tarp. I'm telling you, that's a really good purchase because tarps have so many different uses. So many. You can build shelter, you can waterproof things, you can camouflage things, you can rip this tarp up to create cordage. You can do a lot of different things with the tarp. And for only $12, 
So um, your, your thinking behind this was a myriad of applica practical applications. Everything that I purchase has an application that I could see myself doing. It's weird, I get a feeling when I go to a surplus store, um, just because I know surplus don't have the highest tier of quality equipment, but from a prepping standpoint and just a uh, being prepared standpoint, mm -hmm. there's a couple of niche items that I think I purchased that I'm like, okay, either I can only buy this at a surplus store or what I'm buying has application. Yeah, surplus stores are interesting because there's, as, as you saw, there were, were a lot of different options and I kind of felt a little overwhelmed by the amount of options, the things so that I could buy. Shit. So you have to narrow your focus uh, of like, like you have to have a parameter, right? You have to yeah. have uh, rules and guidelines to guide like, well, am I gonna use this, uh, you know, is it a camping thing? Am I thinking survival? Am I thinking yeah. myriad of applications like you were talking about, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So. So I mean, the thought process behind this is, you know, if I need to make a shelter, if I'm going camping, if I need to waterproof something, I didn't get one of those fancy colors. They had like really navy blue and like really neon green type yeah. of tarps, but I wanted something really neutral. Uh, and this one, you know, has a gray backing with kind of a brown other side. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like this is neutral enough to really not draw attention to anything that I'm creating. Uh, it would make a really good base layer for like a shelter or, you know, if I just wanted to cover up some ammo or whatnot, I don't think this would draw too much attention. So I'm pretty happy with this and it was only 12 bucks and it's eight by 10. So it's a pretty big size tarp. That's great, man. Good All purchase. Right. Let's All see right. what you got. Show you, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Very simple. Pair of socks. Pair of socks. Not just pair of socks, three pairs of Dickies socks. Wow, right? man. High performance socks, work socks, all for 10 bucks, 9.95, you know? I'm definitely a big fan of uh, fresh socks and taking care of your feet while you're out in the field, whatever we might be doing, whether it's uh, FTX or uh, maybe just going for a hike or a ruck, ruck march or something like that, you know? And the cool thing about this is it's got this little uh, green thing, the little reprieve kind of tag here. These uh, socks are made from polyester, which was made from recycled bottles. So bottles on your feet. Yep, bottles on your feet, essentially. I'm wearing plastic bottles on my feet, which is pretty cool. They're recycled, made from recycled materials, which is always nice. Reuse, renew. Save the planet, recycle, dude. Save the planet one sock at a time, folks. They may not be merino wool, but hey, they keep your feet dry. That's all that matters. Simple and effective. Thank you, Dickies. Okay, Thoughts I'm gonna channel. I'm gonna show off our my uh, my next selection. I went ahead and purchased a five by ten brown fishing net. Fishing net, huh? Yes. Not for fishing though. No, not for fishing. I would not imagine. You're not a big water guy. Not a big water guy, <laughs> but hell, if I wanted to use it for fishing, you could. Um, nets are really good for making fish traps or funneling, you know, in fresh water. So you think it's survival? Yeah. See, all, all my things are like survival okay. slash preparedness, right. but. That's not the reason I bought this. The real reason I bought this netting is because this netting is what is required to create a base layer for a ghillie suit. Ah, oh, you're thinking ahead. You're, you got some plans. Yeah, so I, I have a bunch of recycled multi-cam tops that I had from when I was in regiment and when I was going through RASP and ranger school. And I haven't yet started the process of constructing my own ghillie suit because ghillie suit construction should be done by you, like buying ghillie suits on the internet is a real sketchy thing and you don't usually get what you pay for. If you want the absolute best version of a ghillie suit, I highly recommend building it yourself. So it's a Coyote Brown net, it's really good earth tones. So once I decide to finally pull the trigger and build my own ghillie suit, I have a good layer to start. So that's exactly why I wanted this ghillie suit net. Coming uh, up on future, future episodes of X FTX, folks. Yeah, We're ghillie suit construction. You. I'll do, why not? I'll and it'll be 12 do. hours long. Yeah, yeah. probably, <laughs> probably. All right, man. Well, this is my fishnet for my ghillie suit. Let's see what else you got. All right, up next, I've got... A belt. A belt. Belt, folks, listen, I'm thinking practical. I'm thinking, am I gonna use it? Lots of different applications. I could use it with jeans. I could use it with khaki pants. It's, it's real simple. Like I said, I, I, I said everything I'm gonna buy I'm, I'm going to have to use. I'm gonna buy, you know, I'm gonna def, it's guaranteed that I'm gonna use this thing. And uh, it might seem mundane, but folks, gotta keep your pants up. Gotta keep your pants up. That's how you gonna run if your pants are falling down. That's right, man. How you Pick gonna, your pants up, how you wear clothes with and destroy the enemy if you can't even keep your pants up. up. That is true, man. Hey, Maybe? I'm not gonna knock it, because you know, a good genuine leather belt, they're, they're solid. You That's can't solid. get away from them. Yeah. Um, 
Folks, you will definitely see these items in future episodes of Shift Fire, I guarantee it. It's gonna be hard to see the socks. But yeah, right, it might be hard to see the socks, but you'll know they're there, folks, you just remember. Absolutely, whenever Israel's wearing boots, you'll be like, he's wearing dicky socks. You're thinking of those sticky socks. Okay, those well man, you know, models. you're 100 bucks. <laughs> so can't knock anything you're getting. It was, uh, it was 400 bucks. So let's see what I got next here. Okay, oh, I don't even wanna count this one because it was so cheap. Ah. I went ahead and I got a emergency blanket. Something em that should be in every single go bag I or think so. camping emergency gear, survival gear. I believe so. I mean, this was literally $3 and it is so small. It is so packable. It is so lightweight that there's no reason not to have one. Yep. Um, especially thinking about like any type of uh, casualty care or TCCC or you know RFR, Ranger First Responder. Um, hypothermia is a big indicator of shock, which leads to death. Right. So part of the lethal triad, you're trying to you're, you're trying to prevent hypothermia from setting in. So having some sort of heat blanket, especially one that's this compactable, this small, this lightweight, there is no reason to not get this. It's just something good to have um, in any go bag, any kit bag. Uh, you should have a heating blanket. So I was just like. Whatever, man, it's three fucking bucks. Yeah, yeah. Might I as mean, well get it. I didn't get one of those because I already bought one. Oh, yeah, you already have one. I, I already have six. Oh, ah, darn. Yeah, now I have seven. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, man. Let's see your next uh, item. Coming up next, team. Oh, man, this is, you know, we'll see how this works out, but I just had to get this, man. This is like old school style. A Lenzatic compass, folks. This is like mm. land nav basic training. I use this through uh, the Q course for the star course where you're finding your points out there uh, for selection. And I've, I just had to get another one. Now, this is a $12 one. I don't know if it's gonna be the highest quality, but I'm gonna get it out there in the field and test it out and I'll let you know. Um, it just brings back a lot of memories, man. I love that Lenzatic compass, you know? Hey, I'm not gonna knock you for this because that I think is an excellent purchase. I already have one, so I'll, I, I was looking at this as well. Um, and I have the Where? military grade one with the tritium uh, oh, glow okay. in the dark, so that's what uh, kind of. Did you buy that, high. or is, did you kind of? Is, is that issue? I acquired it. Um, so Found it on the side of the road, folks. I acquired it. Tactically acquired it. Um, but the GPS is all good and dandy, and it works really well. But nothing beats knowing how to do the basics. Yeah. And this, it's like this won't fail unless it's ran over by a car or broken. But right. map and compass. Protractor, knowing how to find your your uh, location, knowing how to navigate through the wilderness using this stuff, resection, intersection, it can all be done with this. So yeah. good job, man. Yeah, that was man. a good purchase. Just trying to get back to the basics, man. Trying to reacquire those skills, you know. Absolutely. So I actually only have two items left because my more expensive item kind of took the bulk of the the money all that right. I had. All right. But I think it's money well spent. Oh. So I went ahead and purchased a Life Straw water bottle. So for those of you that don't know, Life Straw specialize in water filtration uh, devices for survival or for prepping. They had um, the actual Life Straws, which are legit straws that you can use and drink water right out of a river. It's literally wow. a straw. And I thought those were cool, and I was at first gonna get this, but then I started thinking about like, okay, well, when, when am I using this? And I, I go back to an experience that I had in the National Guard when we were running um, a couple of reconnaissance lanes, like a numerous, uh, I think it was about a 48 or 72 hour recon lane, and we went black on water. And we had zero means of filtering our own water so this has been on my mind for a long time of how can i you know continue replenishing my water source so i can continue to hydrate and be able to be combat effective because dehydration is a huge killer i mean you can you know you can go days without food but the you second go, you run out of water oh man you're you're, you're yeah you're well, done i think i heard it once you guys can correct me in the comment section but you can go two weeks without food, but you only get about three days without water. Exactly, so water was big on my mind, and the reason I got the bottle is because if I'm thinking about the life straw, like I have to commit time at the water source to get it. Yeah. And in my environment that I'm using in a military environment, it, you know, I could have security at the water source, but do I want to be out in uh, po the possibly open? Because you don't really get to choose where your water source is out there. You have to go to it and posture mm -hmm. security. Or if you're doing speed balls, which is like pre-planned drop-offs for supply that can't always happen on reconnaissance. So I'm like, this is something because you literally just scoop 
yep. cap it, put it in your backpack, and the filtration device is in it so I can literally drink it on the move. So yeah. it's something I can literally go to a, a water source, literally fill it up all the way to the top, cap it, put it in my backpack, and now I have filtered water without having to dedicate a bunch of time at that water source, which could be life or death from out there in the open trying to fill up water. So right. I thought this was a really good idea. Yeah, really um, good, man. The iodine tabs, I even have a, a filtration pump, yeah. but I don't have one that comes in bottle form. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this um, this one ran me $46.95, so pretty much over half of my 100 bucks. But I think it's money well spent. It's a little limiting, but I mean, hell. Uh, 650 milliliters uh, of water that I didn't have to be, <laughs> that right. I already consumed that now I can continue to consume yes. from any water source. I thought it was a good idea. So yeah, that's great, man. I was good pretty survival stoked. Tool. I, I was pretty stoked about this one. That's cool, man. Yeah, good survival tool. I I appreciate that. I appreciate the forethought. Yes. Uh, my next one is super simple, but it's something that I know I'm gonna use for my IFAC, and that's just mid years. Mid years. Nice, man. Simple. Uh, I've seen them, seen other guys have them. I feel like this is like the last piece that, that I need for my IFAC. I've got a tourniquet, mm. I've got a bandage, and I just have this, get those get those clothes off. Clothes that snip snip, baby. Yeah, um, man. Everybody but, should have some men's shirts. I know I run some on my kit because they're super convenient. Yeah. And for field craft, like not everybody carries a knife on them, but you need something to cut it with. Right, and it's only three bucks. Three bucks, super simple. Oh. Met yours. Easy, man. Well, I have one more thing, but I'm gonna save it to the end. Okay, let me, I got I got two more things, yeah, so let me get yeah, one yeah, more out of the way. Yep. This one, it was, I, you know, I told myself I wasn't gonna be redundant and get stuff that I already had, but this is a higher quality version of something that I already own, so I thought it was worth it. I got myself a little Condor dump expansion pack. stuff sack. Yeah, yeah, a little dump pouch. So it's right here, you get it hooked on to your belt or your pack or whatever, open it up. Flips out and it comes a little dump pouch, right? I'm a super fan of bags and uh, things with compartments and stuff like that because, you know, sometimes I get lost in the sauce. I forget where I put something or I get confused. I don't like having things in my hands. So if I can get rid of something and just dump it real quick and not have to worry about it, I'm a big fan of that. So it's yeah. good, good sturdy material, you know, it's got the molly on the back and it folds out. That's what I liked about it. It folds out the fold it away, kind of store it and stuff, but then boom, when you need it, it's right there. Thanks, man, I'm a, I'm a big fan of dump pouches. I ran one throughout my military career. Um, super convenient for, you know, tactical reloads instead of trying to stow back in the pouch. Right. And if you have a pretty, you know, we have pouches nowadays that make it very simple, but back then, or just top loading the flap pouches, it's really hard to restow magazines in them. So if you have a dump pouch, it's easier than just literally putting it in the dump pouch, reloading a new magazine. So cool, man. Good thought process behind it. How much did that run you? Uh, this one was seventeen ninety five, about eighteen bucks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not too bad. Well, I, I'm excited. Let me know how it is because uh, Condor has yeah. a reputation. Condor does have a reputation around here. We're gonna test. We're gonna field test this and. Future episodes, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, perfect. So you have one more item. I got one more item. You got one more item? I do. You want to go first or you want me to go first? You go first, man, because I'm pretty stoked about this. All one. right, all right, cool. This is something, this was kind of a, it was, it's a little more expensive, but it's something that I've always wanted. You know, you're out there, you're trying to start a fire or something like that. And I know we got to get the basics right, yes. you know, sticks and rocks and stuff like that, and that's important too, but man, I just kind of, this was kind of an impulse buy. You know, I kind of just had It's to, your money, man. You spent it, we go for it. And I got myself a true plasma lighter. Plasma lighter. Yeah, it's got the electrical arc there. You don't need a flame or, you know, if it's high winds or something like that. Um, I saw it there and it called to me, no fuel needed, just a battery. You just know? a battery. So, <laughs> this is a plasma lighter. This ran me about 30 bucks right here. But uh, I'm happy with it because I'm building up my camping gear and uh, I'm ready for some survival stuff with this one. So Cool, man. True plasma lighter. There you plasma go. lighter. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, creating fire on a windy day is a very frustrating and daunting task. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see the thought process behind it. Good pick. Pales in comparison to what? my final Come on, that's a, that's a plasma lighter, friend. It's not the most expensive thing in the world. And I saw it and I had no idea what else to buy. So I said, <laughs> Huzzah! <Whoa! laughs> Machete! Machete! Yeah, dude, oh I just saw, I saw it. No, this. no, no, let me, let me see that thing, man. Let me see it, let me see it. Oh, it's a piece of crap machete. Like okay. you would, this <laughs> thing would literally <laughs> chop your arm off by accident. It's so like wobbly <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> But we gotta like, go out and field test this. Sometime, we have to. Man. We gotta chop some fruit, fruit ninja, real life with this thing. 
Fruit. And not to mention, there's no like hand guard, so like when you grip it and you get real sweaty, like you, you might will just slip up on you the blade. Will is slip. the blade tight? Is it, I don't is it know, sharp? dude. It has some dents in it, but I'm just like, uh, I have. Very, you gotta sharpen that thing up. I was like, I have ten dollars left, and this thing costs <laughs> literally ten dollars. So I said, why the f not? Let me just get a machete. Yeah. Correction. This machete was twelve ninety five. So I spent the rest of my money on this because. I didn't really see the necessity for anything in there because I have a lot of stuff at home already. Yeah. But I don't have a machete, and not to mention, it, it's just fun to hit <laughs> and break stuff with machetes. Totally, man. And then break the machete and you don't feel so bad about it because it only cost yeah, you Yeah, because it only cost bucks. me 12 bucks yeah. from the surplus store. <laughs> that was my impulse buy. That, that, <laughs> that called to me. Oh, so that was the one that called you? That's yeah, great, yours man. was fire, and but mine was just cattle decapitation. Fire and steel, folks. Yeah. Now is the time, Cameron, when we compare total cost, right? Total How cost. much did you spend total? Because the guy at the surplus store, folks, we went to Supply Sergeant over in Burbank, California. They were really great, yeah. uh, very helpful, and uh, we even got a little bit of a discount, right? Yeah, they gave us a discount, so thank you yeah. guys over Thanks at Supply guys. Sergeant. Really appreciate it. And he, he threw in some freebies, too. Yeah, what was your freebie? Mine was the heat blanket. It was, <laughs> was $2.98, and he's just like, ah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Mine was the shears. Right there. Yeah. Well, He's man. Like, ah, right, you're good to go. All former military gets a discount over at Supply Store. Absolutely. So, without further ado, man, it looks like my total after the discount was eighty-nine dollars and four cents. Oh wow! You got you got away with a good discount. My total after the discount was actually ninety-six dollars and four cents. And so far. you didn't get a machete. So. And I didn't get a machete. I could have, I could have, oh, I don't think I could have gotten a machete, but man. Maybe I need to take this belt back. Maybe. I don't know. Now I'm going to use that belt. All right, folks. Now looking at, looking at my beautiful pile of stuff and Cameron's mediocre pile of stuff. Hey, watch it, buddy. Folks, what do you think? Who had the better haul? All right. Let us know in the comment section who you thought got the better deal. All right. And uh, yeah, let us know. And, uh, we all know, we all know what we got. Yes, we do. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for this special edition of War Wallet. We hope you enjoyed watching this video just as much as Israel and I enjoyed going over to the Supply Sergeant and loading up on some surplus items. Give this video a like if you enjoyed watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up on everything Shift Fire. Leave a comment below. Let us know whose haul was superior. And as always, fire team, stay sexy. We'll see you on the next one. We've declared war on all other YouTube channels. Starting with this $100 bill. We're going to use it to fund the war effort. What the hell? Get away. Get away. I, this is my store. She looks so happy. Look at her. She's like, I'm gonna be okay.